Hi everyone. This video is going to be about identifying premises and conclusions in arguments. Section 1.1. Remember that all starred problems, if you have the textbook, are found in the back. So I won't be doing the starred problems. Those you can do on your own and then verify yourself. In exercise 1.1, we are to <clears throat> identify premises, identify conclusions, and then write them out in complete sentences. So remember that when we're uh, when we're evaluating arguments and writing them out, we should change the language such that um, every premise and every conclusion is a complete sentence. So sometimes you can have two premises in one sentence, but we'll get to that in the future. Okay, so number one is a starred problem. So number two, since the good, according to Plato, is that which furthers a person's real interests, it follows that in any given case when the good is known, men will seek it or women too. Um, okay, so since, what is since? Well, if you look at page three, um, or depending on which text you're using and which edition, um, you can find your premise indicator words and conclusion indicator words. Since this, thus that. So since is a premise indicator. So since the good, according to Plato, is that which furthers a person's real interest. So, the premise, P, or premise one, is the good, according to Plato, furthers one's interests. Is that what it said? Something like that. Furthers a person's real interests. It follows that. What is it follows that? So if something is said and then something else follows it, generally that would be a conclusion indicator. It follows that in any given case when the good is known, humans will seek it. So we know that our conclusion is in any case where the good is known, people will seek it. And that is the answer to this. So we have one premise and one conclusion. So remember, since is a premise indicator, and it follows that as a conclusion indicator. Whatever follows those words is usually, in the first case, a premise, in the second case, a conclusion. Number three, as the denial or perversion of justice by the sentences of courts, as well as in any other matter, manner, is with reason classed among the just causes of war, it will follow that, Find that, think about that. Important words, light should be flashing. It will follow that the federal judiciary ought to have cognizance of all causes in which the citizens of other countries are concerned. Well, we know where our conclusion is, right? It will follow that. Whatever follows that is the conclusion. And as, as this is the case, thus that must be the case, um, the first um, sentence is uh, the premise. So there's only one premise. It's pretty long. So how do we write this in a sentence? The denial or perversion of justice by the courts is classed among the just causes of war. So I'm not going to type all of that out right now. Uh, I'm going to now just type it out while it's paused and then we'll get to the conclusion in one second. So premise one, the denial or perversion of justice by the sentences of courts is with reason classified among the just causes of war. And then our conclusion is, it will follow that conclusion, the federal judiciary ought to have cognizance, the federal judiciary ought to have cognizance of all causes in which the citizens of other countries are concerned. Again, one premise, one conclusion in this argument. Okay, let's do one more. Number five, artists and poets look at the world and seek relationships and order, but they translate their ideas to canvas or to marble or into poetic images. Scientists try to find relationships between different objects and events. To express the order they find, they create hypotheses and theories. Thus, the great scientific theories are easily compared to great art and great literature. All right, there's a lot more going on here, right? Um, the word but 
logically means and. It has a negative connotation, but if I say, we were gonna go to the movies, but it rained, what I'm saying is, we were gonna go to the movies and it rained. I'm expressing two different things, um, uh, two different facts about existence. So artists and poets look at the world and seek relationships in order. And they translate their ideas to canvas, dot, dot, dot. So let's find, uh, first of all, let's find a premise or conclusion indicator. Um, there's no premise indicators here, but there is a conclusion indicator, thus. So thus, the great scientific theories are easily compared to great art and great literature. So what we can do is we can start with our conclusion. You can start anywhere you want in an argument. So the conclusion here is that great scientific theories are easily compared to great art and great literature. So there we have it. Now let's find our premises. Well, the premises are gonna be everything else. So artists and poets look at the world and seek relationships in order. Premise one. To save time here, I'm not gonna write out the entire premise. You would need to do that on your own and it'll be good practice for you to do that as well. So artists and poets look for, look at the world and seek relationships in order. And, but, they translate their ideas to canvas or to marble or into poetic images. They translate their ideas into, and then you would write out the, that as well. Now notice that those two premises work together. We'll get to a point where we diagram arguments and those would be connected with a plus sign because they will work together. Uh, without both of them, you can't draw the conclusion that you draw here. But again, don't worry about that too much right now. That'll be uh, at the end of chapter one. Okay, so we know the first two premises. Scientists now try to find relationships. Okay, so that's premise three. Scientists try to find relationships. This one's easy because all of these premises are written in complete sentences themselves, so you don't really have to change the language. To express the order they find, they create well, this one will have to change maybe a little bit. Um, you, not really. So to express the order they find, they create hypotheses <clears throat> and theories. And then thus the great scientific theories are easily compared. Okay, so we have completed that one. This is an argument that has four premises and a conclusion. The first two premises work together, and the second two premises work together in a similar fashion, and thus, the person making this argument is claiming that the great scientific theories are easily compared to great art and great literature uh, because of the way that they are created and the form of them. And that's Douglas C. Giancoli in the Ideas of Physics, third edition. All right, well, I hope you found this uh, video useful and helpful in identifying premises and conclusions. Um, and uh, good luck as we begin this wonderful journey into the realm of logic.